This is Q on CBC Radio 1 across Canada, Sirius Satellite Radio 137 across North America, and from PRI, Public Radio International in the United States, and on bold television. Hot flashes, night sweats, memory loss. Well, I guess menopause isn't always a wellspring of hilarity, but that hasn't stopped Sandra Shamus. For more than 25 years, this Canadian queen of comedy has been mining her personal life for laughs. She made her mark on the Canadian theatre scene back in 1987 with a hit solo show, My Boyfriend's Back and There's Gonna Be Laundry. After some time away from the spotlight and a move from the city to the countryside, Sandra returned in 1998 with another satiric one-woman performance, Wit's End. It wowed audiences with its satiric take on topics like marriage, divorce, and midlife, and spawned a sequel called Heart's Desire, Wit's End 2. Now Sandra Shamus is back with another installment, Wits N3, Love Life, or Love Life, which follows Sandra as she tackles life's hurdles from buying specialty bras to farm machinery with her signature mix of honesty and wit. Gemini award-winning performer Sandra Shamus joins me in Studio Q. Hello. Wow, that's a lot to remember, honey. You did good. <laughs> what? A, I, I, why was I nervous? I, I think don't know. You I don't were, know. I was watching you. You were. I was watching Pointedly. you. Pointedly. You were like, well, your what? eyes were like... <laughs> You're, you're the only man in the room. <laughs> I don't usually do. <laughs> if there was someone else, I would have been looking there. <laughs> it's nice to see you. It's awesome to see you. Yeah. Honestly, I haven't seen you in a long time. I, I haven't seen you in a long time. And, and your show is so is is really, really strong. And people Thank love you. it. Yeah. People were freaking out when I saw it the other <laughs> night. I mean, in the audience. And, and that was true of your last show, too, which was nine years ago. Mm-hmm. Where have you been? Well, um, I went away... Um, I didn't intend to take as much time off as I did. And um, a couple of things happened sort of simultaneously. It was an inter- it was an I call it an intersection. Mm. I call it the intersection, which was going through this hormonal tectonic activity just happened to coincide with the economic, uh, tectonic activity right. that was happening. The global economy was going through. Well, menopause. apparently, everyone was going through the change. You know, <laughs> right? Yes. And things were never going to be the same. Mm. They really haven't been since that time. And when I would have slated a show, I could not. I couldn't actually rely on my physical self because memory loss, uh, body shape shifting. Um, hot flashing, heart palpitations. When I, when I collate what is necessary for me to step up on that stage and present a show, mm. I couldn't rely on myself because things were changing every day. Like really, it, I was terraforming. Like I was, it was just a completely different experience than I had ever had. Mm. So rather than push the river, I chose to s- allow it to flow. And it took this long. You had me until the river metaphor, but I'm still, I'm still there. I think I'm still that's there. That's it, Jim. I'm that's it. Outside. I, I, <laughs> I had you. you wanna... I've never had you. I just want to put that down on record. You've never had me. Ever. Hmm. <laughs> well. Yeah. Look away. Uh, Look away. <laughs> but, but what's interesting? What's intriguing to me about this is you're a, you're a performer. I mean, you're so comfortable on stage. Performers love performing yeah and and these dramatic gaps between when you do shows yeah are it's it's very interesting yeah i mean it, that you're not uh, you know chomping at the bit the way a you know a stoner craves cookies like you know i, I need to get back on stage oh that's because i have a, a life that i like living <laughs> and find value in other in very everyday items in my world you don't miss it you don't miss being on stage when it's, you're not it's doing it. It's something that I do. It's something that when I do, I, um, I, I adore it. I love what I do. I, and when it's not time, I obey that. Hmm. I, I'm, I'm internally compelled. I am internally compelled to come out on stage by, you know, my own intuition, and intuitively. It wasn't time four years ago. Intuitively, it's time now. The, and this the, is the last of that show. Of this trilogy, yeah, right? Yeah. This, that's the, the last. this show focuses a lot on menopause mm-hmm. or, or the change, as you, as you call it. Actually, it focuses on me changing. Right. Not, it, 
well, I have to put me first. Right. Um, you know, because really menopause is only the name of your last period. The, none other, no other period ever gets a name. That <laughs> one gets a name. Mm. And you don't even know it's your last one until a year later. When you were young, was, was menopause younger. something? Younger. When you were younger. <laughs> That's that's what I meant. When you were really young. I'm on you, man. I meant really young. <laughs> yeah, like was, five? Well, yeah, when you were five. Yeah. Was menopause something? No, I mean, when you were younger, was menopause something that you you looked upon with dread? What was your relationship to it? This, You know, you're the second interviewer who has, ad- and who has asked me a similar question, which was, uh, someone else asked me, well, when women know at the age of 14 that they're about to start hitchhiking the hormonal highway. I mean, isn't it just implicit that you're actually going to go through menopause? What's the big deal? Hmm. Believe me, it just has every moment of your attention the entire time. You just, your whole being as a person changes and every choice you make is so, you know, physically in the now. You can't stretch your imagination far enough to know what is going to happen. Furthermore, I mean, I wasn't tutored. You know, I do mention in the mo- in in the movie that I am presently starring in a Winter Garden, <laughs> and now presently in film. my own mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, in the show, there's no menopause movie. You know, we were all sort of collectively in high school when we were younger, introduced to this concept. Hmm. You know, in the most hermetically sealed way possible. But there isn't, there hasn't been a collective movie, and that's why I'm so grateful for Oprah. So okay, well that's interesting. The, the, I was going to ask you: uh, were were there older women uh, than you? Uh, who? <laughs> it's like a minefield <laughs> trying to talk to you about this. Who? Dance, <laughs> dance, <laughs> pretty boy, dance. <laughs> uh, were there were there older women who helped prepare you for this? How does this work? Or or well, or, or does it is it all uncharted territory? Well, I I don't know. I have to say that everybody goes through it in their own particular way. I, I made a you know, I made a concerted af- attempt at being as genuine as I could possibly be with myself the entire time. Mm. Meaning, I mean, um, as the, as things were changing and it's not like the day you start your period, menopause goes like that process goes on and on and on. It's like a car that just doesn't stopping, starting, stopping, starting. Oh, 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 no, it's not going, you know? (laughs) So at every juncture, you are like beset with a a totally different set of circumstances. Like it's kaleidoscopic, you know, like the the circumstances Mm. are the same, but they change. And so the result is always going to be different. In my case, I just, I needed, you know, I needed space. I needed time. um, I needed to eat well. I needed to sleep a lot, um, you know, rather than go and get the, drug from the dog. I mean, a lot of people go through it in the way they need to. And Mm. my symptoms apparently were very mild comparatively. You know, and at the same time, given what I do for a living, if I'm going to stand on stage and remember something for two hours and I don't have the confidence to do that, then I have to find a way, I have to find a way back and create a new normal for myself. Mm. So that's, you know, that's what happens. You talk about this being you're you're talking about your own experience mm-hmm. and you, uh, when you when you're up there on stage you have such a devoted fan base particularly of women do you feel uh um when you're writing this stuff and when you're on stage do you is there some sort of idea that you have about educating people what what is it is it about stop looking at me like what that. do you want well I, so I, you asked me to look you at you at the beginning a... of the interview you said are you gonna look at me when i talk to you okay you asked i'm looking i can look away because there's really <laughs> way more interesting people in the booth over <gasps> look at him now he's all huffy pants when you open up about your personal life about like that, what do you hope to... <laughs> now you don't no, see. you can look at me. It's okay. Oh, well, thank what you. Do you, but you, had a, you had a concerned look on your face. So I wasn't I'm sure. listening. <laughs> do, what, no, do women not listen to you? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looks like when a woman is listening. Concerned? Well, oh, I am like, collating <laughs> your... You're asking me something. Honestly, can't we right. just go out and have a nice meal? We have to argue every time. <laughs> Oh, the question, I mean, okay, so when you're on stage and you're opening up the way you do, 
about your personal life. Oh, okay. What are you hoping to convey? What's is it, or is it just this is entertainment? I'm I'm uh, a, a comic writer, and uh. I'm going to give people a great two hours. Okay, I'm not a I'm not a comic writer. I'm a I write the, I I speak the truth of my life as I see it, as I experienced it. That's my calling. I'm called to do that. Believe me when I tell you that when I was informed, just stand on stage and tell the truth, I didn't like it. Hmm. You know, I said, who's going to ever, ever want to hear that? You know, but apparently the closer you get to the truth, the more accessible the information is. Now, having, you know, having said that, I, I can only speak for me with any authority. I'm grateful to be able to do that. And if as you're sitting there in the audience and something I have said speaks to you and you take it away and it informs your life in a, a hopefully in a, in, a, in a way that improves your health mm. as a human being, then I'm grateful. But th really that's not like, I will tell you this story because it's important to me. Mm. And I found it, I find that I, I find that as true a north, you know, a true as true a north direction as I can go. So as long as I'm following my own true north, then I'm I'm good. Mm. And then I can find all the rest of my directions. You know? But do people talk to you about it being <clears throat> helpful mm -hmm. to them? Yeah. That you talk about this on stage. Mm -hmm. There's a relief. There's absolutely like oh thank God someone else. There's mm. a you know, uh, you know, having identified a situation and having spoken of it as plainly and as humanly as I know how, then then there's an acceptance of mm. it. I mean, I have, for the first time in my career, a huge amount of men in my audience, which I'm thrilled about. Thrilled. Why do you think that is? I have no idea. I don't. I don't even want to postulate on that because, mm. in case it stops. <laughs> I love I love that they're there. You think you might jinx it? I don't want to jinx it. Right. By looking at them. Right. No, I... Uh, Do you look at them with concern when I don't look speaking? at them because they're not talking to me. <laughs> they're just listening. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they look like when <laughs> yeah. they're listening to me. I don't look me. concerned when I'm listening. Do you? No, Do I? No, you don't. You look oh. away. I don't look away. You yeah. looked away. I don't I'm think just that's telling true at all. You. I was I'm looking just saying. at you. <laughs> yes, you are just the saying. Film will, the film will bear me out. I, know, I was looking at you with a smile on my face, actually. An affectionate <laughs> oh, smile, oh, I thought. Oh, isn't that nice? Uh, you, you talk a lot about your farm mm. north of Toronto, mm. uh, where you moved 16 years ago. Uh, Wits End is not only the, uh, the name of your show, it's also the name of your farm. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about that experience now, 16 years removed. Do the challenges of country living surpass those of the city, or are you still... Uh, uh, is it still a, 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 a retreat for you in a positive way? Mm. The, living there, um, uh, when you know how big you can be, you never want to be small again. That's kind of how I feel about being there. Um, I, when I moved there, I felt like a pea in a barrel, rolling around like this tiny thing in this massive mm. space. And the longer I stayed there, the the easier and freer I got. Um, and as a result of living there, I have, you know, a set of talents and abilities that, like, are fantastic. I can actually MacGyver stuff <laughs> if, if needs be, right. little, <laughs> little lady. <All> right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and that thrills me. That, that whole, you know, the whole talent base of, like, life skills and went lateral. So I love knowing that about myself. Um, it's my home. It's empowering. Uh, what, what what is it that thrills you about about that? About being able to MacGyver. Yeah, thing? I I love problem solving. Problem solving is like fun for me. What do you actually mean when you the, the MacGyver reference? What 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 does it actually mean? Okay, like, say today. Yeah. Um, a raccoon got into my garbage. Yeah. And uh, I don't throw a whole lot away. I mean, pretty much I only have plastic. I, everything else gets churned into something else, uh, burnt, pressed, the, everybody, you know. Right. And so I've got these bags of plastic out there, and the raccoons got into it, so, the, the, you know, the debris field is massive. I don't have a garbage can close by. I just left the bags out. Usually I take my half ton into town. So 
I needed to collect all this garbage, which, you know, was everywhere. I needed to get it to my half ton. <clears throat> so it's a heavy bag. So uh, I used my sled <laughs> to drag it over several times. Like it was like heavy and right. I used my sled um, <laughs> and I pop it into the back. Like that's very small, but you right. know, like when you have to take a heavy bag 400 feet right. uh, to a truck that is in the field, um, MacGyver like, would have used a sled. Well, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> I, and I had I had to come into the city. I had to wash, <laughs> right, you know, because right. I was going to be seeing folk. Uh, so, you know, just little things right. like that. Just like right, like, right. how do I get this huge survival survival stinky yeah. bag yeah. of stuff into the back of the truck so the raccoon doesn't come and get it like right. tomorrow? So that you can't call the superintendent to do that. Yeah, no, right? there's none That's, of that. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> the, this, the subtitle of your show is, is called, by the way, um, a, as proof of your talents uh, in the country. I didn't lay them. I just want you to know. <laughs> you brought me eggs. I did. I'm very touched by that and excited as well. Although uh, a bit confused by the fact that there's 12 eggs, but one of them is white and the rest are brown. One of my brown chickens lays a white egg. I don't know what that means. She's teaching me all about, you know peaceful coexistence <laughs> like brown chickens lay a brown egg white chickens lay a white egg like that's sort of the rule mm -hmm. i mean it sways from one side to the other but generally these brown egg brown chickens always lay a brown egg mm. one of them covertly lays a white one so it's become my signature covertly yeah because i don't in know. secret i don't know i don't know which one it is <laughs> and i think when she lays it i think they kind of all kind of get around her so i can't tell the difference right. between them wow yeah i know but always white, uh, lays the white egg. That one, there's always and one. Is there a white difference egg. between a white egg and a brown egg then? None. No. no. None. I, uh, okay. Other than brown eggs aren't healthier or something. No. Oh. It's not like brown rice. <laughs> <laughs> God, you're pretty. <laughs> Sometimes I say things just so you can laugh at me, <laughs> apparently. Uh, the, the subtitle. I want to call your mom now. <laughs> the subtitle of your show is called Love Life or Love Life. Yeah. Which or which one life. is it? Both. All. I'm a woman. I like options. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> men don't like options? I have no idea what men like. Well, I think men like options as well. Well, then speak for them. <laughs> love, love, you love life, but, you, but it's also about love life. And it's about, you know, uh, and about my love life. You say romantically, I'm far more in love with myself than I've ever been. Certainly. Tell me about that. Um... You know, intriguingly enough, prior to, you know, getting onto the, I affectionately refer to it as the hormonal highway, I was a fairly empowered little 11-year-old girl. And you'll see that a lot with 11-year-old girls. They're like, they come in the room, go, hi, you gonna eat that cheese sandwich? I want it. Okay, say hi to your auntie. No. And then they leave. Like, I love them because they are not, they haven't, they haven't gone there yet. It's right. not, it hasn't happened. And once you are relieved of the duty of populating the planet, it comes back. Mm. That kind of, that really kind of sweet chutzpah comes back. Gonna eat that cheese sandwich? No, say hi to your aunt. She's dead. Ah, you know, and you walk out. So, I mean, I think that's fun. I love that about me. I love that I'm not getting wound into anyone else's drama. You know, like I finally find myself when someone says, Oh, I don't know what's going on. I had, you know, they're all upset. I actually start laughing. <laughs> and they're like, well, I'm glad to see my pain amuses you. And it's like that. Don't say that because that's going to kill me. Like, I'm going to laugh even harder. But you feel emancipated. There's an emancipation, but there's also a compassion that runs quite parallel to it. Mm. In that I hear you. I, I probably cried for the same reasons. Probably harder and guess what? It ends. It really does end. This too shall pass. But when you're right in the middle of the fire, you don't see it. You can't see it. But you kind of make the point in your show, somewhat subtly, and at times not so subtly, that, that, that this emancipation, this feeling that you're having, uh, is very much that, that you think women share. Uh, you say it's a good time to be a woman in your 50s. Mm -hmm. In contradistinction to men, 
mm-hmm. who you, uh, in a very comical way, um, uh, uh, just demonstrate uh, uh, as being sort of whiny and my, my knee hurts and I've got these issues and I'm and I'm having a tough time of life and I hate aging. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, uh, tell me about the difference you've learned between the genders. Well, what have I learned about the difference between the genders? Uh, sir, or the sexes, I maybe. believe my dog ate that remark. Um, let me think. Um, well, 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 you, I see. You as, were nodding when I said it was better for women than, than well, than, it is. Than men. It is a freeing. There is. I mean, I feel a lot freer than I've ever felt as a human being and as a woman. Um, certainly, the idea of you know pregnancy is out of the way. That's gone. Like hallelujah. You can't. You know. <sighs> They're the yodeling in the morning is really worth the price of admission. It's, uh, there's like, a, I haven't bought a sanitary product in years. Like, it's gl- <laughs> glorious not to even go in that aisle. <laughs> is this what it's like? It's fantastic. Um, my creativity is so high. Mm. My ability to maintain my creativity is so high. I am I am reveling in that. Mm. Like right like right now I am loving what I'm doing. In fact, what you wouldn't see because you've come only once, but this is the first time in my entire career that I actually improvise on stage. Mm. And and I'm easy with it. Like, oh, I think I'm going to throw this in today. And then there are actually times when I forget whole chunks of mm. that show. However, because of what I've done and how I've created it, it moves very organically. Mm. Like there's no piece that can't be there or can't not be there. Like but, it's quite beautiful. But is this p- part of um, uh, menopause or where women are at in, p- in particular in their 50s? Or is this just a, uh, a product of getting wiser and knowing ourselves better as we age? I mean, I remember your last show. Um, about nine years ago, mm-hmm. and when you, when one of the subtexts of the show was, I'm in my 40s now, and it feels pretty good because I know myself. I know something about myself. Yeah. Yeah, and now you feel like you know yourself even better. Hormones are extraordinarily powerful. They dictate virtually every decision you make. Like it's not, it's not seen as that, but they really do. They really do have that kind of sway. And once you are relieved hmm. of that. And it's true. Men don't experience it the same way women do. It's true. We are like, you know, we're attached to the grid. (laughs) Like we're attached to the thing that makes the life. Like we are inexorably attached to that. And once the grip of that releases us and we, and you know, a lot of people, for instance, I never had children. When I'm asked, do you regret not having children? Why do people say regret? If I never had one, I could have bought kids. You know, I could have, right. I could have had, you know, I could have had you as a child. Right. <laughs> you know, like, I, I, if that was meant to be for me, I would have had mm. it. I'm that proactive. However, um, when those who have had children and families and so forth, when this situation occurs, when, this interse- when they enter this intersection, they have to reorganize who they think they are. So for me, for instance, never having had children or being involved in any of that, I learned so much about being autonomous that when this all occurred, I asked myself, do I need to know more of what I already know? And the answer was no. What I need to know now is what I don't know, which is being part of a community, involving myself in other people's lives, Hmm. having people in my life, and being of good cheer with that because I'm safe now. I'm totally safe. I am. I am. By virtue of me standing here talking to you, I know that to be a certain fact. I may not have always trusted that in myself. You're making me really feel like I wish I was a woman in her 50s. I'm not even going to go there. I'm, but, but I'm being serious. It's, I mean, it's a... It's, it's a um, um, uh, profoundly appealing state of being in, in the way you're describing it. Well, given given what the edict was prior, you know, which is find someone, right. make make things, right. make life, go make life, go go right. go make life choices. Who you're choosing as a partner, all of this is so like you know woven in, mm. and it's it's 
you know, how we live our lives and how we make peace with that. Like, that's the individual's responsibility. There's this moment in your show. I mean, you joke about experimenting with clothespins, uh, giving, giving yourself a trial facelift. Uh, there is there is a lot of pressure to look youthful for most performers, if you're, if you're a performer. <laughs> have, have you ever felt like you had to try to stall that aging process? No. Why is that funny? Well, there's I, a lot of people who come in here who are, you know, overwhelmed with that, that concern, right? Well, uh, honey, look what I do for a living. Look how I do for a living. Like, really, am I paying attention to my own life? I'm paying attention to my life. Yeah. And I am honoring and, you know, I, I may not, you know, w- with all due respect to myself, I may not always have liked how that change was occurring. Mm-hmm. And I was way too fascinated by how it was happening to stop it. Mm. Like, okay, well, let's just go another day. Let's just see what that looks like. I, you know, I offer up the story about thinking I should dye my hair. And that, you Well, know, somebody says to you, like, you, uh, and then hey, a if friend you dye your hair, says, you're going to be... You know, be, if yeah. you look 10 years younger. And right. I think that's not a priority. Mm. Looking 10 years younger is not a priority. Feeling... Free mm. is my priority. Feeling at ease and having space and being able to move through that space that I'm creating for myself with ease and dignity. That. But how did you figure that out? You see, the reason I asked the question is yes. not because I think that you're concerned about it. It's because it's empowering that you're not concerned about it. And and most performers are, as I say, overwrought with the, you know, the with aging because they're not going to get parts anymore, or they're or it's it's going to it's going to be more difficult to be appealing on record covers or whatever it is, right? So how did I, I you figure you. it out? I believe you. I how be- did you figure it out? Well, a I produce my own work. B I always hire me. I like me. <laughs> I'm the only one that ever applies for the job. Honestly. Where are the other applicants? Okay, well then, come on in. Um, See, if I'm going to mine my the experience of my life, then how was I like? How was I going to explain to myself that I did things out of fear Mm. rather than out of a quest for my authenticity? You know, really that. That's the question for me. I mean, I, I, that's who I am. That's how I answer to myself. So when I'm standing on stage and I'm telling you this story, my entire vibe is online with what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. My, right. all like what I'm thinking, what I'm saying, and what you're seeing are all the same thing. So there isn't a moment where you're going, well, I don't know about that. Mm-hmm. There isn't. At least for me, like I, and I haven't seen the show, uh, <laughs> but I hear it's good. <laughs> you, you still, I mean, I, I'm, I'm out of time, but you still didn't totally answer the question. I mean, the question. Well, ask it better then. <laughs> the question was. God, man. How, do you, how did you learn? How did I learn what? To not, to be able to shed your, the, the chains of, of the societal pressure on performers to doll themselves up and look younger and all of that. I don't have anyone telling me anything that way. Hmm. I do not have that. I don't have anyone saying you will not be relevant. I don't have an external voice that just doesn't exist in my world. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't allow it. it. Yeah. I wouldn't allow it. Why would I, why would I, why would I do that when the fabric of my existence is so sweet uh, to have someone come in and comment on it and say that I'm not enough. This is not, this cannot stand. It cannot ever stand. Mm. I'm an, I, you know, in the story of, in the story about um, sorting through my relationships with men in the second Mm -hmm. act, I learned a lie a long time ago that I wasn't enough and I thought you had to earn love. Yeah. To earn it. You have to earn the biggest, freest (laughs) thing in the world. That's what I learned. Ah, that's sad. And one of the glorious things about this place, this intersection, is that when that stuff popped up, I had all the emotional 
uh, solidity to deal with it without rancor. Mm. It was like, oh, that needs, it was like seeing a dust bunny. It's like, okay, that needs sweeping. Let's do that. And that's how, you know, that's how I got through, that's how I get through pretty much everything else. Did I answer the question at I all? I think so. I mean, or did well, I just you, glance off well, it? You answered the question. There's a, I wish I had more time with you. There's a lot, there's a lot of things that, that in that answer that I, I'd, I'd want to pick up on. You know, I mean, it, it is great, but you do control the means of your own production, right? In the, in the, I mean, not everybody can do that. And, and for the, I, I, I would guess that one of the reasons why actors in Hollywood are getting plastic surgery is because they won't land the sitcom part if they don't, you know? All right. Well, let's go with that. Like, I... You, you say that yes, I am. I am in charge of my own work. That's true, and not very many people are, and that's true too. We are all in charge of ourselves. Hmm. That never changes, and who and what we decide to listen to, when we, when 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 I when I think your opinion is more valuable than my own, then I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Even in this interview, you mean? You're in trouble <laughs> with this interview. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. Um, but as a human being, when my own authority over myself can be trumped by another, mm. by a glance or a withering look or a, a comment, you know, off the top of the second act when I say there are things that I decided that I didn't need anymore and one of them was gossip, and I say, if I'm gossiping about somebody, she needs a better friend than me. Right. And if I'm doing that to feel better about myself, then I need to be a better friend to me. So ultimately, that's always, I'm always coming. If there's something standing in my way of coming home to me, then I need to deal with that because that's where I belong, home to myself. If Wits End 3 mm. is the end of the trilogy, yeah. what happens next? I don't know. That's the honest to God truth. Mm. I know this is the last show. It may actually be the last one person show. I know. I don't even like saying that sentence. It, it, when I first heard it in my head. You're it, the master of the one woman show. You can't give it up. I am the master. Haven't you read I'm a genius? <laughs> really, man. I've seen must you that you're Must a I walk around with my press? <laughs> um, I'm not really sure what I believe. I believe that the second, this second act, if you will, of my life yeah. will involve collaborative um, projects with other people. I know, I gotta get along. <laughs> it's gonna be exciting. Um, and I, I am interested in doing that. Already that's happening in my farming, so it should, you know, it's going to start happening in my other world, too. I look forward to those. Uh, I mean, in the meantime, you've got your show keeps getting extended and you've got a, a hit show that you've got to keep doing for the next uh, month or so. But uh, uh, I look forward to, to the Sandra Shamus uh, collaborations as well. Thank you. Thanks for being here. It's been a pleasure. Did you enjoy that? You know what? I did. Did you? Yeah. Do you think you were hard on me? Not even close. <laughs> Not even five <laughs> teaspoons. <laughs> Com comedic performer. Comedic performer. Nice. What do we even call you? I hardly know that too. Com comedic performer. Sandra is good. Sandra Shamus. <laughs> her new show, which is absolutely fantastic. Wits N3, Love Life. For more information, sandrashamus.com. We'll put a link to that from our website. Sandra Shamus has been with me here live in Studio Q.